What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Lionhearts and we are less than a week away from the beginning of the Shanghai Major Cycle. The RMRs begin in just a few days. And before action begins in the server, I'm going to channel my inner Thorin, Maui Snake, and Kassad and deliver to you guys my steaming, sizzling, volcanic hot takes about the Major so that I could generate people getting mad at me in Reddit comments. But Thankfully, I am not alone in this Herculean task. I have set out into my brand new community Discord top link in the description to ask you, members of my community, what your own searing hot takes are, and we're going to be going over some of those today. And hey, maybe I'll have the foresight to, after the fact, come back to this video, and we'll talk about whether those hot takes succeeded or failed once the major is over. So let's not waste any more time. Before we get started, make sure you guys take a second, leave a like, leave a comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It helps out immensely in YouTube algorithm. Like I said, the community Discord is the top link in the description. If you want to participate in future videos like this, as well as stuff like watching along games of the major or just hang out with me in general check that out come hang out with the community today without any further ado let's get these takes off the grill all right so we're gonna start off a bit more mild but we will ramp up in absurdity as we go on the first take coming straight on my discord really feels like the safest answer and that's that we will be seeing a g2 versus navi grand final now, I don't really think this is that much of a leap when you consider that G2 and Na'Vi are two of the three best teams in the world right now. It's them or Vitality, G2 are coming off of a win at Blast World Finals, Na'Vi have of course been the best team this year and the best team the rest of this split, so they are the obvious favorites. I will give the caveat that G2 are the most extremely up and down team in the top five. You don't know what you're going to get because they rely so much on their personal performance. I will say though, we'll get into this a little more in just a little bit. It's very obvious that this would be the storybook ending for Nico's time with G2. After all the issues, the failed attempts at the major, the missed shot on Nuke against Simple, Nico has been searching his entire career for that elusive major trophy. He's had two grand final attempts thus far, and when you consider how uncertain his future in a major viable roster might be, because we don't know what Falcons will be, it just makes sense that he would make a deep run with this team. And then to add on to it, BD Navi, the defending major champions, Nico at that point just takes the bag and he goes to the Falcons retirement home and he doesn't care anymore, which at that point, Godspeed. Anyways, lukewarm take, but it would be interesting to see it play out. Now, we're getting into the good stuff here. This is from my buddy Pre in the Discord. M80 will make a deeper run than Team Liquid at the Major. He also adds on that FaZe will actually look good again. We'll talk more about FaZe in a little bit in a different take, but M80 doing better than Liquid is the kind of take I love to think about because Liquid, they've shown flashes with this new lineup, but Ultimate has struggled recently. Everyone expects them to make it through the America's RMR because the field is just not that strong. I think we all agree on that. But M80 are a really cool dark horse team because of that man, Lake. This is my own added on hot take. I think Lake is going to be one of the best North American players within the next two years. I'm fairly confident in that. And honestly, this M80 team has looked pretty good. They didn't do too well at the Thunderpick World Championships, but they did beat NRG to make it into the next season of Pro League. And they just have a lot of upside as a young, scrappy roster. I think the in-game leadership's pretty good. Every time I've watched them, the tactics haven't looked that terrible. And Lake just passes that eye test. So considering Liquid are really dependent on Ultimate making a turnaround, I think this is actually pretty viable. I think M80 make it through this qualifier, and they have a shot to be a cool upset team through like the first couple rounds, I think. This next take comes straight out of my mad, demented psyche, so get ready. Cloud9 are going to make the elimination stage of the Major, but the Falcons will not. Now, I'm going to give you some time to digest that, because Cloud9 haven't been at a Major tournament in God knows how long, and Falcons, of course, have Simple. But I'm going to uh, embrace the crack pipe here and try and explain why I think this is the case. One, I actually really like this Cloud9 roster on paper. I think Heavy God has actually been really good. Axile has looked better than he did in the old electronic lineup. Icy has slotted in perfectly. The only player who has not delivered on expectation thus far has been Interns. But even then, I still really rate Boomage as an IGL. I think the team has looked really good tactically. The only reason we haven't seen more out of them is that Cloud9 has lost a lot of the invite potential to some of these events. People haven't been able to see this team in big matches, so it's not on anyone's radar. 
But I think the lineup, especially compared to the pool they're dealing with and the ARMR, leaves plenty of room for them to make a spot and get into the opening stage, and from there, it's anything goes. I mean, when you look at this field in that ARMR, the top four slots are pretty much guaranteed. Navi, Vitality, Mouse, and FaZe, they're gonna make it. Mouse and FaZe may have problems, but they're not gonna lose to this field. It's those three remaining spots that are definitely up for grabs. And when you look at the other teams, I think the only teams left that will threaten Cloud9 are like a Songal, a Falcons, potentially Saw, maybe Fnatic. But even then, I don't think any of those games are 100% givens. I think Falcons have a lot of problems. I think Saw are inconsistent. Songal just are very unproven. And then Fnatic just isn't very good. Boomich has been in the biggest tournaments before. He's been on the biggest stages and done it. I think he's good enough to lead this team to make that run. For Falcons on the other side of the take, I think Falcons will get through this field in the RMRs, but I don't think they make it to the elimination stage of the major. I really don't. When I look at this team, I see simple hero ball and literally nothing else of value. I think Majisk has to do a lot to prove that he's still a top player in the game and we really haven't seen it. Madden is ultimately just an okay support player. Dupree is washed up against good competition and Snappy may be a good IGL, but he's not Kerrigan levels to justify the fact that he is a traffic cone with a rifle in his hands. I said it in my VOD review of their first game, but I really think this holds true. This is simple being in the trap of like a 2017 era Na'Vi where he's just having to carry Edward, Zeus, and Flamey, and they are just doing next to nothing to help this guy out. Obviously, I could easily be burned by this take. It's simple. He's the GOAT for a reason, but I do not think he has the team around him to support the GOAT's return. At least not yet. Alright, going back to the Discord, I'm going to combine two takes here, coming from Pre and 2AT here. Uh, one of the three teams will make it to top 8 at this major. Virtus Pro, Eternal Fire, or the Mongols. And then 2AT took it a step further, so that the Mongols are going to make it to the semi-finals of the major. Now, this is real nuclear-grade hopium-level takes here, because we're talking about three of the most game-to-game, series-to-series teams in the top 15. Now, first off, I have to do my job here as the known greatest hater of Virtus Pro to ever live. Uh, I am anti jame IGL till the heat death of the universe, so I must stand on business here and say that, uh, no. Virtus Pro, don't get me wrong, they're going to make it to the major, because at the very worst, the one thing Virtus Pro have always been good at is being a shackle on the door preventing worse teams from getting in. They don't lose to worse opponents, at least not often, and that means they should at least make it. But beyond that, the first better team they run into, they're going to crumple. Electronic is going to run up mid on Dust2 by himself and get folded like a t-shirt. Now, Eternal Fire definitely gets more interesting because obviously we've seen some success from them in recent months. They had that great run at Pro League where they lost to Na'Vi in the Grand Final. That was a best of five, so maybe they fare better in a best of three, best of one Swiss system environment. But again, the Eternal Fire paradox is they live and die by the ability for Zontaras and Woxic to both show up and be superstar players at the same time. We saw that at Pro League, if those two turn up, they could be surprisingly good against a lot of the teams in the world. But the question will be, will they do it? If they do it, I think they could make it to a playoff stage of the Major. I think that's a perfectly reasonable ask. But there's going to be so much game-to-game -game variance and with these formats being best of one into double elimination best of three, there's a lot of potential for Eternal Fire just to go up and smoke. No pun intended. Then lastly, we come over to the Mongols. Obviously, they just won a relatively big tournament, beating Heroic in the Thunderpick World Championship Grand Finals. A video is one in the production of that, by the way, keep an eye out. And they've had some scattered good results throughout the year. Ultimately, I think it kind of comes back to the fact that they play in this weak region in Asia, uh, it just feels like you can't really push the ceiling of these Asian lineups super far because the domestic competition doesn't have much room to grow. A very similar situation that they've been in for a while that now the NA region is currently facing, to be honest with you. So, Mongols, it feels like they have a ceiling, and that ceiling is like, at best, like a 12th or 10th place team in the world. But can they actually strike out and win a tournament? I don't know. When I see players like Senzu, I see a lot of potential for him to break out and be like a top 15, top 10 talent even. But will he have the opportunity to take himself to the next level? That's always going to be the question mark. We've seen this in the past with players like Bentet. It just feels like there is a cap on the power level for these teams. So we're in a weird situation where they're always going to make it out of the RMRs, right? Because their other competition is like a FlyQuest and the Drillas. But... 
will they actually ever be able to take that leap and make a deep run at the major? It feels like it's hard to bet on. I would guess that they make it to the proper elimination stage of the major, but I don't think they'll go much farther. A top eight? That would be huge. I just don't think it'll happen. All right, going over to our next Discord take. This comes in from my buddy, Sanbinator, and that's that Furia will make a top eight and Liquid will make it to the finals or at the very least semifinals at the major. And we are really starting to get out there now. Furia top eight? Listen, uh, I will still stand by the fact that Fallen is old and they would be better off getting a better domestic opera, but I've made peace with the fact that the Brazilians are going to run it down until Fallen decides that he wants to leave, not the other way around. Uh, they have looked better now that they've gotten Skulls properly embedded in the team. Caserato is obviously still one of the very best players in the world, so I do think they have the pieces to make that kind of run. I do think it's the situation around Caserato that will ultimately hold him back. He himself has had some questionable performances recently too, and it does feel like we're getting to the point where there's a fair argument for Furia not even being the best team in Brazil. Uh, more on that again in just a minute. So. Can they make top eight? Yeah, yeah, they could. Uh, it'll be an uphill battle if they do. And if they did, it would be one of Furia's best runs all year and probably for the last couple of years. Now, as for things that are absolutely not happening, it's Liquid making the semis or the finals of the major. Uh, I feel pretty confident in that because of Ultimate. And I've been one of Ultimate's biggest defenders, and I stand by the fact that he has so much potential yet to be tapped into. I think he will grow a lot over the next year or two of his career. But as of right now, uh, you got to call facts as facts here. He's been found out. Players know what to do against Ultimate. He's been thoroughly scouted, and he has not adapted his play, and the numbers reflect that. His first four events were really good. His last three events have been really, really bad. And Liquid are frankly going to go nowhere with their Opper, who invests so much resources, dropping a sub-0.8 rating. So unless Ultimate has a turnaround, this take doesn't go anywhere. And even if Ultimate does have a turnaround, Liquid have a lack of results against top teams as well. They have those early uh, Pro League wins against Na'Vi, which feel like an aberration based on the fact that they didn't have the information on Ultimate. So, I don't know. Uh, I want to believe in Twists and Naf, but I feel like this roster is still short a proper piece. It feels like JKS is just kind of a placeholder for a real fifth, if I'm being honest. So I don't really think that uh, a Liquid Finals run is in the future, but uh, it'd be crazy if I was wrong. Alright, we're going back to me for this next hot take, so lock it in because I'm about to get wild. And my BR is currently the best Brazilian team in the world and will outperform Furia at the major now listen i know that this one is really going to ruffle some feathers especially because mibr and like their last couple of matches have been losing which has me a bit worried but i'm going to stand on this one just because i really really like this roster a lot and i thought they did a lot to impress people back at pro league and frankly i do think the roster has gotten better since then Obviously, they've added Lukowski, who is another young Brazilian talent that I think has a lot of potential. He has stumbled in his introduction to MIBR, but I have a feeling that he will pull it around. I want to believe in Lukowski a lot. But even outside of that, Insani and Safe are so crazy good. And I'm not sure if there is a better duo on a Brazilian team right now. Payne gives them a serious run for the money. And if you told me Payne was the best team in Brazil, I would absolutely take that as a credible take. I would not judge you for that. But I'm looking ahead here, and I really think MIBR are going to be the best team in Brazil. They will beat Furia in the RMRs, and they will outperform them at the Major. I'm standing on I'm locking it in. Get your MIBR stocks right now. All right, we're going to round out this video by taking a second to talk about FaZe and Na'Vi, as I feel like reputationally, these two teams stand the most to lose and gain by their performances in this major. For Na'Vi, it's obvious. They've been the most dominant team in the back half of this year. They've done so well to basically show everyone that no, the previous major was not a fluke. We are better than we were at the major. We are the best team in Counter-Strike. We run the best system in Counter-Strike. We have the best players. We are number one. And they could cap that off. In a year that's been shrouded in so much doubt and the situation was simple going to the Falcons and everything else, if they could round that out with back-to-back -back major wins, this would not only be Na'Vi's era, I would consider them the first dynasty of CS2. That's a lot to live up to. So the question is, 
what does Navi have to do if they don't win the major for it not to be a disappointment? And I think bare minimum is for Navi to make it to the playoffs, to make top eight. I think they are a shoe in to make it that far. But the question is how far do they go afterwards? Ultimately, they are the team to beat in this field. They've been the best team in Counter-Strike. Navi have so much to gain by winning. And I know the community perception is going to be really bad if they don't. And then we come over to the other team that almost had an era to start off CS2. And that's FaZe. FaZe's struggles are well documented on this channel and elsewhere. And it's plainly evident when you watch them play. This is not the FaZe that was making every semis, every final at the start of the year. They have struggled so much, especially since the player break. So the question is, will they make a turnaround and make a run at this major? Now, I'm going to give you some solid evidence to go off of here, and that's the fact that it's Kerrigan. Kerrigan is one of the best tournament preppers we have ever seen, and he's had plenty of time to boot camp ahead of these RMRs. He's also playing in the easier of the two European RMRs, so he really doesn't have to worry about making it through to the elimination stage, at least in my opinion. So I think they're a shoe in to make it to the main event. From there, playoff phase is one of those things that it feels like you can never not count on it, at least until this roster breaks up. There's always the potential for FaZe to come into the playoffs and suddenly dominate even the best teams in the world. So if we see Kerrigan, top of his form, vetoing the mastermind, and importantly, we see the best versions of Brokey, Rops, and Frozen, Reign as a support piece, FaZe could absolutely make a deep run. And I'll take it a step further. I think FaZe are going to make it to the semifinals of this major. I think once we get to the semis, it gets a lot bigger of a toss-up just because of teams like Vitality, G2, Na'Vi. Those teams, you can't really not give them quarters. They are the three best teams in Counter-Strike. So I'm not going to say that FaZe guaranteed make the grand finals, but I think FaZe will have a shot. And honestly, if they can make it to the finals, I don't think FaZe will repeat the collapse they did earlier in Copenhagen. We'll see though. Anyways, those are your Shanghai Major hot takes. Leave your own hot takes in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. We'll be down there responding as always. Top link in the description. Check out the community Discord. Come in, hang out. We'll be organizing watch parties for the reasonable timed games during the RMRs as well as the Major. And in general, it's been fantastic to get a chance to hang out with you guys and chat over the last week and a half. I'm really happy with the community we're starting to grow over there. So come on over and join today. These videos are powered by advanced.gg. If you check the link in the description, go to their website, browse any of their excellent products, and decide to make a purchase. You can use my code LIONS10 at checkout for 10% off. Thank you to Advanced. I also work with Refrag. Refrag are by far the best self-improvement platform in CS. If you want to take your game to the next level, consider getting a Refrag subscription. And if you do, use my code LION15 for 15% off at checkout. Anyways, shout out to my channel members, Justin, Jesse, Furley, Bubble J, Milan, Berto, and Dr. Cocter. If you want to become a channel member, you can do so at the link in the description. Support me directly. It helps out immensely. Check me out on Twitch as well. I stream Sunday through Friday at 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So come hang out. Talk to me about the major. All that good stuff. I'll see you guys soon with another video. Peace.